Hello, everyone, and welcome in to the first match of the semifinals here at Corsair's Closed 2023. It's sure to be a good one in the loser's bracket between Rimuru and Takedo. I'm Dio. I'm going to be your caster for this match as we take on the very first match of the semifinals and our first elimination bout for top eight. These players both coming into the loser's bracket this weekend. Rimuru from the winner's bracket in a matchup against Kriller last weekend. Did have some very, very solid scores. Same for Takedo in his loser's bracket match against the Mustache last weekend. Both players looking pretty solid overall in both of their matches, despite a relatively one-sided scoreline for Kriller in Rimuru's match last weekend. Both of these players relatively well-rounded as well. I think a lot of people uh, really think of Rimuru more as sort of an aim and speed to trick, relatively strong on the pure mechanic skill sets, but Rimuru having lots and lots of good plays on some of the less mechanics-focused maps last weekend, relatively good scores on many of the tech maps in the previous pool, as well as some pretty solid scores on the hard rocks as well. And Takedo actually having a bit of a rough time on some of the tech picks against Mustache last weekend with how mechanics focused they were alongside some very good scores on the hidden aim maps and the reading maps as to be expected of somebody like Takedo who is one of the most well-known reading players in the tournament scene at the moment. Before we go any further, I want to give a shout out to a couple of things. First of all, Welcome back to Twitch! Very first match streamed live on Twitch, and second off, at least for this year in Corsairs, and second off, a uh, quick shout out to our sponsor for the tournament this time around, Momokai. It's currently a promotion going on with the new Momokai Tap Trio. It's a limited Corsairs closed 2023 edition with, of course, the Tap Trio. Gateron Pro 2.0 Yellow Switches, a multicolor PBT R4 profile keycap set, and exclusive Corsi's logo stickers. If you want to support the tournament and pick yourself up a nice keypad for Osu, go ahead and head over to momokai.com forward slash Corsace. And if you are watching on Twitch once again, welcome back. If you want to look at any of the VODs from the rest of this tournament, as we are starting in the semifinals here on Twitch for this tournament, all of those matches were previously previously streamed and recorded live over on YouTube. You can check out all the VODs over at youtube.com forward slash at Corsace. And with that, I think all the housekeeping is taken care of and our players should be just about ready to go. Hopefully, we'll get to them soon. It's going to be an interesting match, I think. Uh, Rimuru, not really a very solid reading player. I'm expecting bands towards some of, or at least one of, the reading maps in this pool. We do have an AR 7.2 Nomad 6 and an AR 7.5 Hidden 2, so I expect at least one of those to be banned by Rimuru. Um, aside from that, the Nomad 4 this weekend is far, far more Takedo favored than it was last weekend. Last weekend's Nomad 4, much more mechanics focused than I think a lot of players expect that type of pick to be. And so Rimuru looking, I think, more competitive with Takedo on last week's Nomad 4 than I think is probably to be expected this weekend on the tech pick in Nomad this time around. DT2 ban from Takedo is not a huge surprise. Again, Rimuru most well known for the mechanical skill. You can see even that's reflected on the plain stats for this tournament with speed being Rimuru's best stat straight up and aim being his third best stat only behind speed and stamina. So uh, speed ban and an aim ban from Takedo, not really all that surprising. And a DT3 ban from Rimuru, also not super surprising. Takedo, uh, very, very good aim control player, relatively good at alt and more technical skill sets like that. So the DT3, not a super surprising ban. And this DT1, not a super surprising first pick. A lot of these DT1s throughout the tournament have been mostly aim focused with a slight burst focus to them as well. This one, no exception to that rule, 270 BPM, 8.3 stars and AR 10.5. This map is very, very difficult to say the least and is a really tough test of just how far your basic DT mechanics can carry you within a tournament setting. Uh, Rimuru, one of the best DT players in the world, full stop, 
one of the best mechanical players in the world, full stop. And so I, I think picking into this as a first pick in an elimination match like this, where you're looking to go from top 12 to top eight against a player who has made a name for himself as one of the best tournament players in the world and one of the best in North America is a very, very solid strategy. Pick what you're good at and get out to an early lead. And with that, let's get into our first map. First pick for Rimuru. Double time one again, 8.3 stars, AR 10.5. Aim focused, speed secondary focus in this map and just overall very difficult. Kido though has over the last two years or so really started to become an all-rounder in all senses of the term. I think if you pick Hard Rock into Takedo, he's a little bit less comfortable than usual, but aside from that, even on high approach rate DT stuff like this, he is still very, very comfortable overall. It might not be his specialty, but he's not bad at it, and you can see both players holding on to the full combos right now, going into the first QI time, both hitting the build-up section here, both hitting the burst as well, Identical accuracy at the moment. Finally, another couple hundreds dropped, and they actually dropped the same amount of them. There goes Rimuru with a little bit of an act drop. But nobody dropping on the speed aim hybrid sections here either. Those sections are so much more difficult than just speed or aim by themselves, but Rimuru misses on the jumps afterwards. We're a third of the way through this map already. Takito will match the miss. Act advantage now to Rimuru by just a little bit. A slight combo lead as well. Going into the second ki time now. Both hitting the long jump chain there, neither missing on the triple at the end, and both of them holding the same combo as after the break. Neck and neck right now, accuracy close, combo close, score close. It's anyone's map still halfway through. Two key eyes down. Let's see if either of them break during this breakdown section. Neither player misreads the one third there. Neither miss on that jump chain. Takedo dropping a lot of ack on the cut one thirds. And missing the last note of the 1-2 chain as well, and that will give the score lead over to Rimuru. Also known as a Kalibed, probably a more well-known name for most players there, and should explain exactly why he is doing so well on this DT1 pick. This is the specialty for this player, and really the mechanics are something that carry Rimuru throughout a lot of tournament matches. He's so ridiculously good at these mechanics picks that it becomes hard for anyone to challenge him. And uh, Takino, I think, seeing the break, seeing the combo for Rimuru at the end of that last section, knows that this map is over, doesn't feel the need to try anymore. This one is all but over at the moment. Really solid score at the end of it all for Rimuru. Only the one miss, 700k plus on an 8.3 star map in tournament is not something you want to belittle. That is a very, very good score. Takino as well, I mean, could have had 600 plus K at the end if he continued to play to the same standard that he had been throughout the rest of the map. So very, very good stuff from both of the players. But Rimuru just a little bit more consistent, able to hit that last long jump chain before the final section of the map. And granted the win because of it after both of them miss right around that same one third mark. Relatively close first pick for Rimuru, but that's kind of how you expect these matches to go when you have slightly more of a specialist versus slightly more of an all-rounder. And Nomad 6 now, the first pick for Takedo. I mean, <coughs> excuse me, what else do you expect from this player? Uh, hidden 2 banned by Rimuru. Nomad 6 left open for Takedo to pick. Uh, Takedo, one of his best skills is reading. It's not necessarily reflected in the stats here, but... Anybody who's paid attention to the tournament scene for more than even a little bit of time can tell you that Takedo is one of the best low approach rate reading players in open rank international 1v1 tournaments specifically. I think Takedo, you know, when it comes to team tournaments where you're allowed to have more specialized members, does start to get outshone on reading picks a little bit by the very top brass, people like Badu, for example. But outside of players like those, you're going to have a hard time finding anyone who can compete with Takedo on reading picks in tournaments. 
and there's a few of those players in this tournament already, but I don't know that Rimuru is one of them. Both of these players having a very hard time with this map. All of the perfect stacks and perfect overlaps in this one make this extremely difficult to read, even barring the low approach rate, and you can see exactly how hard of a time both of these players are having with it. 12k for Rimuru a quarter of the way into the map. 35k for Takedo. I mean, this is... It's triple score for Takedo, but at what cost? He's still getting like 45k, 50k a third of the way into the map. This is a really, really rough start for both of the players, but definitely a much rougher start for Rimuru, who even a third of the way in is still below 70% act, just finally cresting it there, and not quite at 20k yet. Uh, I mean, I think this map's pretty much over already, but wow, <laughs> both the players really having a tough time with this one. I, I personally identify with what is going on on Rimuru's screen right now. I, uh, yeah. I, I don't know how Takedo is even able to get 100k on this, frankly, because trying to read these patterns even while casting is uh, making my brain short circuit a little bit. So I, I have a personal identification with whatever Rimuru is doing right now. Just trying to cheese out the combo as best as possible, but uh, it's, it's not working on this one. Takedo can, can read this to some extent, and Rimuru just cannot. Um, and I don't think that says anything about how bad either of these players are at reading. Again, Takedo actually one of the better reading players in the tournament scene. Um, and when it comes to 1v1 players that you usually see, you know, in the top 12, top 16 of 1v1 tournaments, open, international open rank, he's usually one of the best reading players left in the tournament at that point. And um, he's getting 150k on this map. So this map's just very, very hard. Um, no, no shade to Rimuru or to Takedo on this one for getting low scores. This is just very, very difficult with all the perfect stacks, perfect overlaps, back and forth all over the place. Very, very tricky map. Uh, never really was contested from the start, though. It was a very one-sided first pick for Takedo there. And uh, this, that's really what you want to have from a first pick, right? It doesn't matter if you're getting 160k. If your opponent cannot play the map, then you're going to win regardless. So very good pick from Takedo. Was not close the entire time. And that is a solid 1-1 start for both of these players. Rimuru off a relatively more contested double time one. And Takedo off a very one-sided Nomad 6 to start things off. And now, you know, we see the DT2 ban come out of Takedo. We see the Nomad 1 ban out of Takedo. First pick is Aim from Rimuru with a little bit of speed in it as well. Second pick is going to be just straight up speed. Nomad 5, it's a LAR map. It's just pure streams and bursts in this map. I mean, uh, this is 270 BPM stream stamina, essentially. It's 270 BPM burst, spam, stream spam, all throughout. There's not a lot else to say. AR 9.8 OD9 is actually relatively low OD for a map like this. So I think you're gonna see higher rack on this than you might expect for a Nomad 5 of this star rating. This is eight stars straight out. So I think maybe a little bit lower OD than players are used to for this star rating. So you might see slightly higher accuracy, but aside from that, uh, this is extremely expected for a Nomad 5 at this difficulty of a pool. Just straight up 270 BPM burst streams all throughout. And that is something Rimuru is very good at. And while Takedo is very, very good at finger control speed, he's not quite as good at the pure stream stamina. Both players finding misses here. Earlier miss for Rimuru. Misses on one of the jumps. Takedo breaking on one of the streams there. So again, still contestable for Takedo. Somebody who has become very, very well-rounded. Worked on the speed, worked on the hard rock, worked on the higher approach rate reading throughout his tenure in the tournament scene. And now halfway through, I mean, it's only a 12,000, 13,000 score lead. This is very, very close between these two players. Combo just about the same. Accuracy lead to Rimuru at the moment, who is still holding really, really well here. Uh, Takedo right on his heels, and the score reflecting that only 20, 30,000 points for Rimuru at the moment. Three quarters of the way through are closing in on that mark. It's 98 to 97 in accuracy, still about a 40 or 30 combo lead for Rimuru. Takedo continuing to drop accuracy, not holding the stamina as well as Rimuru on this map. But the combos are still intact for both players. 
And at this stage, there we go, finally a break for one of them. Takeda will find the slider break there right before the break at the end of the map. And Rimuru now, after seeing the score line, can rest assured he's got this one in the bag. Much like the double time one, both players breaking early on, but Rimuru able to hold when it matters. Takeda not quite as comfortable on the map, struggling more with the longer bursts and streams. Rimuru able to hold on and secure the 700k plus, 750k in this case, score line on both the DT1 and Nomad 5. Two to one, two successful picks in a row for Rimuru. Couple of couple of funny slider breaks for Takedo on that map, the S rank. No misses for him, but lower accuracy and multiple slider breaks compared to the one miss with 98 ack for Rimuru. Still very, very good scores for both of the players on that map. Actually, honestly, both of them making that making them look that map. Uh, both of them making that map. Excuse me, look rather easy. As, I don't know too many players who can get 500k plus every time they play a 270 BPM eight star. Uh, very very solid stuff from both of them. And now we move on to Nomad three. Takedo picking once again some aim control here. I think taking a hint from the double time three ban from Rimuru and taking a hint a little bit from the alt map last weekend. Takedo, if you can compare their scores on the Nomad 3 last weekend, about 100k up versus Rimuru on the quarterfinals pool. Here in the semifinals pool, relatively similar Nomad 3. There's not a huge change in how this map functions. Uh, really continuing the tradition from round of 16 of having these sorts of maps with very high spacing, some long note chains, lots of short note chains with very high spacing and very high curvature to them, almost switching between snap aim and flow aim pretty much every single note chain. More raw aim focused this week, however. A uh, lot of sort of heavy flow aim or heavy snap aim sections rather than aim control sections in this map. So while that kind of mapping still exists in this pick, it's definitely more of sort of a raw skill cap kind of map rather than a control focused map like some of the previous picks. So we'll see how this one goes. <coughs> Excuse me. Bit of a cough. If anything, this map being a little bit more raw aim focused will favor Rimuru a little bit, but looking at the scores last weekend, looking at the scores from round of 16, you do favor and look, of course, looking at these two players, generally speaking, you're gonna favor Takedo on this map. He's much more well known for being a tech player, for being a more control-focused player overall, so definitely not a pick I can disagree with all that much from Takedo. I think this should be in his favor as long as he plays up to what a lot of people here know he can do. Good player dropping combo here at the start, bit of an act lead for Takedo. Only one 100 dropped so far, just at 99 act for Rimuru at the moment. Both of them hitting that build-up section into the first PI now. This is where you start to get a little bit more of the raw aim focus. You can see lots of really high spacing patterns, and one of them actually catches Takedo off there. Rimuru is still holding on to the FC at the moment, and more misses now for Takedo. The spacing in this map may be too much for Takedo to handle as Rimuru holding on to the FC after the first PI time. Not what you want to see if you are Takedo right now, down 650 combo and down a percent of accuracy now to someone who you expect to lose the tech picks and win the mechanics picks. It's a really tough turn of... Oh, that slider break is... Wow, that's Demon. How does he slider break that? That's actually so rough. Wow. Um, well, that's a, that's, a, that's a tough break for Rimuru. That's a tough break for Rimuru. This whole section is so low spacing, so relatively simple compared to these Ki times. He just beast mode the whole first Ki and misses twice on two relatively easy sliders. And now Takedo, big combo lead. He held through the verse. Rimuru misses on this Ki time multiple times now as well. Misses on the squares. It is matched by Takedo though. Chain miss for Takedo in fact. Tons of score drop. Down to 310k, 340k for Rimuru and now both players, again, pretty much neck and neck on this pick. This is Takedo's second pick, mind you. This is something that he chose to go up with against Rimuru. So looking for the win, looking to keep it tied up, not give over an early breakpoint here. It's 
It's gonna take a couple of misses at the end from Rimuru, I think. Accuracy is about the same, combo is about the same, and the score lead is 30k for Rimuru by the end of the map here. So this pretty much necessitates a miss from a Polybed. If he doesn't miss during this last section, Takino will lose this pick on a breakpoint. And Takino has to hold. Going into the ending here, lots of back and forth, lots of cuts, lots of wiggles, and there's a chain miss from Rimuru. That will do it. Takino now taking the score lead, holding onto the combo, not missing on the wiggle streams, not missing on the cut streams, and not missing on the aim control at the end here either. Very nicely done from Takito on the back half of the map to recover what looked like a very, very bad position after that first Ki time. You have to feel for Rimuru a little bit on that pick, though. If he didn't slider break twice during the second verse, right after that first Ki time, his max combo could have been high enough that even those misses at the end, even that chain miss at the end of the map would not have mattered, and he might have taken the pick anyway just off of the max combo, but not meant to be this time around, it seems, as he finds some... Really uncharacteristic looking slider breaks during the easy parts of the map. And Takino, able to hold at the end, able to take advantage, and able to tie it up once again, 2-2. Two to two. Very, very close on that map. And now we get into yet another mechanics pick coming out of Rimuru. Can you tell the trends in this match yet? I, cause I sure can't. Um, <laughs> it's going to be no mud, too. 200 BPM space streams all throughout the map. Uh, this one really focused on the stamina, tons of cut streams, tons of awkward angles as well. So flow aim and stamina, both very high requirements in this map. And of course, Rimuru so far has only been picking speed maps, right? We've seen DT1, we've seen Nomad 5. Well, DT2 is banned. And DT3 was actually banned by Rimuru because it is more of a taquito map. So... Not really any speed left in the pool at this point. All you've got is sort of this Nomad 2 for pure mechanics at this point. The hidden one is an awkward aim map, awkward aim hidden, and that is Takito's specialty. Don't want to be picking that into him. Hard Rock one is actually a light tech aim map, and so not particularly something you really want to be picking into Takito either. We might see it anyway, just because uh, Rimuru, I think, wants to pick those more mechanics-focused maps, but a lot of the rest of this pool is very tech-focused, very control-focused, and so I think Takito in a relatively good spot, especially if he can take a breakpoint on something like this. Takito's long stream stamina, though, is not something that's particularly good. Takito is more of a burst player, but the flow aim in this map is definitely right up Takito's alley. I don't think he's going to have too much of a problem with that at all and we saw last weekend Takedo against Mustache able to pull up 450k on Miss Torbis so not necessarily bad when it comes to long stream stamina either it's not his specialty but again as an all-rounder he's not really too bad at any one thing <coughs> we'll see if he's able to keep that long stream stamina together on this map like he was last weekend against Mustache currently missing on some of the aimier sections though in this map no long stream is really coming in quite yet for this pick. Mostly focused on low aim and spacing changes during these parts of the map. Neither player missing on a huge acceleration there, but this one does catch Takedo off. The cuts and acceleration and deceleration all in one stream. Enough to break the combos of both players, but Rimuru really able to hold longer. And Takedo breaking once again afterwards is what's going to give this score lead for now over to Rimuru, but with multiple breaks out of a Kali bed and none out of Takedo, the score lead now closing in rapidly for Takedo. 10k apart at this point with combo intact, 200 combo up for Takedo, and 1.5% accuracy up as well. It's not looking good for a Kali bed at this point. And much like on the last pick, the first half not going the way of the player who picked the map, Rimuru in this case, on the back foot and needing a miss from Takedo in order to win this pick. We'll see how the back half of this one goes. Structured very similar. You're going to get relatively aimy sections at the start here into some of these longer streams later on. <laughs> is there a chain miss to come through for Takedo is really the question we have to see an answer to. There's a slider break for Rimuru, and at this point, Takedo, I think, is guaranteed the point. There's chain misses for Rimuru as well. His score is going down. Takedo is at least able to hold some combo on these streams as Rimuru finds too many chain misses. Takedo, 60k up. Doesn't hold the combo through that whole section, but doesn't find nearly the same sorts of chain misses as Rimuru does. And that is not what you want to see if you're rooting for a Kali bed in this matchup. Takedo now going to be up the first break point 
two to three in this matchup off of Rimuru's third pick. It was looking very good for some time during that first half. Rimuru able to hold combo for a while during that first part. And Sakito not really able to do so. But when it came down to the end of that first section, you can see the timing of the misses on those graphs for a little bit. It looked very good for Rimuru. And then it all fell apart. And then both players held. And it all fell apart once again for Rimuru in the back half of the map. Just not able to convert the way he would have wanted to on that pick. And Takedo able to snatch away the first break point. And despite it looking relatively one-sided for Takedo after that first set of chain misses for Rimuru, the map was still relatively close. It was only a 50k score lead for Takedo, and so you have to think at some point during this match, maybe Rimuru can pull one back as well. The Nomad 3... Of course, looked very, very close between these two players as well. Takedo just able to win that pick by a relatively small margin of victory. Only, I mean, 25k on the Nomad 3 pick. So two very close wins back-to-back -back for Takedo. Rough shakes for Rimuru to start this match off. And now, I think Nomad 4 here is sort of the breakpoint clincher for Takedo right here. You take a break point off of Rimuru and you want to guarantee that you keep it, you pick Nomad 4. This is Takedo's specialty. This is something that he has been known for for a very long time. If it's not the low approach rate rating, it's the slider tech. And Lord knows this map is full of sliders. Talgo tech at an eight star difficulty level. Star rating is 7.14, but there's a reason this map is in an eight star pool where the Nomad 1 is 8.2 stars, and the Nomad 2 we just saw is 7.9 stars. This map definitely belongs here, and it's the slider shapes, and the way this map tests how well players can aim and follow sliders that make it so, so difficult, in conjunction with so much of the ridiculous flow aim that accompanies them. You can never really stop with your cursor and just take a second to relax on this map, and you can see already a very early league combo lead for Takedo, giving him a little bit of a score lead here. Both players holding on, though, through these streams. Never mind. Rimuru will find the second set of misses as well. Takedo will follow up shortly after with a set of his own. Both players actually missing on the flow aim, not on the sliders. Let me get the, uh, the tumored up slider section. That is a technical term. I'm not even joking. Another set of misses on the flow aim for Rimuru, as the streams in this map just really don't let up. There's so many ridiculous wiggle streams, axel, detail, space streams, cut streams in this map all over the place. And the way that you mix those together along with the slider aim just makes it so, so difficult. A little bit of a combo lead at this point for Rimuru, but not much to work off of with this 1% act lead for Takedo as well. So going to have to be another set of misses for Takedo or major act drops here in the back half as we get this dip spike. Can Rimuru hold? <coughs> he cannot. He finds another slider break, and Takedo is actually able to hold through that dip spike section. And I think that might just secure the point. Takedo ahead from the very start when Rimuru missed on the first about 100 combo in. And now it seems like this map is all but over. 97 ack and combo intact, and 95 ack and zero combo for Rimuru. Takedo definitely looking up on this one. 65k in the lead as well with that 300 combo lead. Take pretty much a miracle for Rimuru to this pick at this point. So I think it's pretty safe to say this will be 2-4. to four. There is a set of misses to come through for Takedo, but I don't think there's enough time left in the map for this combo lead to make anything happen. There is more misses though for Takedo. Is this maybe the miracle? No, it is not. There go the misses for Rimuru and that's why I said a miracle, because if Takedo is missing on this part of the tech map, you know it has to be hard, and Rimuru finding the misses shortly afterward confirms the suspicion and confirms the break point, or rather the break point consolidated for Takedo, winning his own third pick, and now three in a row to bring himself up to two to four in this match.
A very, very quick Hard Rock 2 pick for Rimuru. I think this pick makes sense. Um, Takedo, not particularly a Hard Rock or Precision player. Not to say that Rimuru is either. Uh, you compare their scores on the Hard Rock 2 from last weekend, and they are relatively close, both at about 290k. The thing is, last weekend, the Hard Rock 2 pick was 140 BPM. It was Alt Aim Control and CS 6.8. This weekend, the map is 192 BPM, relatively mechanics-focused with high spacing, CS 7.15, and a lot of high spacing bursts as well. So this is much more straight-up mechanics-focused precision rather than the ulti-aim control precision of last weekend. So yeah, you look at the scores and they're close on the Hard Rock 2 last weekend, but Rimuru is much more favored on the type of map this presents in the semifinals. So. I think a good read of how the scores from last weekend make it so that this pick is actually favored towards Rimuru. That said, really combo lead for Takedo. Both players missing early. A little bit of an earlier miss for Takedo means a higher combo for this part of the map. And that 50 combo lead is pretty close to bringing the score lead over to Takedo as well. Neither player with a significant Ack lead right now. It is about half a percent for Rimuru, but misses to come through as well. And now Takedo, 300 combo up, continuing to combo in this map. And scores last weekend might be damned at this point because Rimuru is continuing to find misses all over the place in this map, and Takedo is just beast moding it. Uh, there is actually a ridiculous score lead now built up for Takedo. 100k as he finds his way through a 500 max combo in this map. Relatively similar difficulty all throughout in this pick as well. There's not really any single diff spike section. So to find that sort of combo for Rimuru here in the back half would take a insane pop off as he continues to find miss after miss. Not able to build up even 100 combo during this part of the map as Sakito does find a couple of misses to match. But even after dropping the high max combo you had earlier was still able to build up to above 100 or so and even extend the score lead past that 100k mark, now up to 110k or so. Rimuru really in a bind with this pick now not working out at all. And this last quarter, once again, 100,000 score lead in a quarter of the map left with barely a combo lead of 100. It's going to take a miracle for Rimuru to win this. Maybe with chain misses throughout this last section for Takedo to drop the score, but it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. Even with a full miss on a burst from Takedo, it's not nearly enough to bring the score lead back within touching distance. And that pop-off from Takedo just does so much work on this pick. 53k almost is the score lead for Takedo on this pick. Now at match point here against Rimuru in this elimination match. Akali Bed really not having a good time on that map. Only able to put up 250 max combo, and you saw there for Takedo, 414 max combo. Just uh, when both players can't really find huge combo all throughout the map consistently, it really does come down to just how hard one of them can pop off. And that one section for Takedo where he just kept going and kept comboing is what makes the play in this case. A single pop off might just decide the match here. As now, Takedo going for the win with Hidden One, Ankle Biters by Paramore. It's attendance map set here. 7.6 stars, 230 BPM Awkward Aim is the skill set for this map. <coughs> Excuse me. Very, very fast-paced 1v1 here and might be a very fast match overall as we... Point. Luckily for Rimuru, it is an aim map. Unluckily for Rimuru, it's hidden awkward aim, which is something Takedo is very, very good at. If you were looking for maps to pick into Takedo, this would not be one of them in just about any case, maybe except for Zuninator. Zuninator picks this into Takedo. Other than that, not very many people do. And you can tell by the accolade, you can tell by the score lead, you can tell by the combo leads Takedo held there for a little bit until we saw the first set of super wide angle flow aim jumps at the bottom of the screen there. Takedo actually missing both on some of the other awkward aim patterns and on that one third build up. So Koli been able to close the gap a little bit here. Both players hitting that set of one thirds into the first ki time or have been into the first ki time for a little bit. 
There is a miss on the offset squares there for Rimuru, missing afterwards as well on some of the other awkward anti-aim patterns. And uh, the misses just keep coming for Rimuru, unfortunately, at this point. 200 combo lead for Takedo. We'll see how long he can maintain that combo lead. It looks like it's going to be growing as well as more misses come through for Rimuru. And uh, Takedo might just be able to close this match out with this combo right here alone. As Rimuru just not able to hold on. And we are already almost three quarters of the way into the map. It's just a repeat of the last pick here for Takedo. As he continues to hold, and Rimuru is not able to find the high combo needed to combat this. He's not finding the chain misses, but Takedo's not missing at all. And unfortunately for Rimuru, unless the miss comes through right now, unless we see a breakdown for Takedo, and Rimuru holds, it's over. Rimuru not able to hold, multiple misses to come through, and Takedo does find the slider break, but that's not nearly enough. 450, 460k to the 280k of Rimuru. Okay, well, he chain misses and it's 440k, but it doesn't matter. Takedo, with a dominant showing in this match in the back half, crushing any hopes Rimuru had of a comeback with the last couple of picks, the Nomad 4 pick and Hidden 1 pick, looking very, very comfortable for Takedo. And that is a 6-2 match in 30 minutes for Takedo, very, very fast picks for both players. And it was looking so close at the start. It was looking very good for Rimuru. You know, good first pick on the DT1, looked very comfortable on the pick. Uh, Takedo wins Nomad 6, what can you do? It's his first pick, right? Uh, the Nomad 5 looked very good for Rimuru as well. 750k on that map, only one miss, 98.7 ack on an eight star speed map. Nothing to scoff at at all, very good scores there. And then, the Nomad 3 happens. Rimuru holds throughout the entire first Ki time and Slider breaks twice in the easy section afterwards. And Takedo, just consistent combo throughout the map. You know, can't compete on the max combo front, but better act and holds at the end where Rimuru wasn't able to and wins by 25k and then wins Rimuru's next pick on the Nomad 2 by 50k. And I, after that, with the Nomad 4 and the Hidden 1 pick lined up for Takedo, it felt very, very tough for a comeback to happen for Rimuru. And unfortunately, the Hard Rock 2 pick just not working out the way that he would have wanted it to later on into the match. Takedo able to win on the Precision pick and able to close it out very easily afterwards with the Hidden 1. Very, very solid stuff from both players. Unfortunately for Rimuru, that is going to be it for him in Corsair's closed this year. He will be knocked out in top 12, tied 9th through 12th by Takedo, who advances into the top 8. So thank you to Takedo for playing. And honestly, a very a very early exit for Rimuru, given his seeding from qualifiers. Rimuru was seed number 3 out of qualifiers. Top three seeding eliminated by the seed number eight, who now is performing at his seed, but has eliminated at this point uh, one of the top three players in the tournament or top three projected from qualifiers. So very, very good performances from Takedo in this iteration overall. Looking forward to seeing his next matchup, which I believe will be against either Chikoni or Karcher, MX-10001. That match will be tomorrow at 12 UTC. But before any of the matches tomorrow, you can tune back in in about an hour for Full Circle. We'll have a Corsace-hosted podcast talking about tournaments. So come back in an hour right back here at twitch.tv forward slash Corsace. Um, we'll see you to talk a little bit more about Corsair's Closed and Three-Digit World Cup. Both of those tournaments ongoing right now. Tomorrow's matches, as this is the only match of the day, are going to be at 12 UTC again with Chikoni versus Karcher. 16 UTC as well with Zudinator versus MCY4. So good luck to all of those players tomorrow. Good luck to Takedo against either Karcher or Chikoni. And thank you once again to Rimuru for playing Corsair's Close this year. 
with all that said thank you all for watching thank you the streamer and the referee for streaming and refing we'll see you back here in an hour for full circle and tomorrow at 12 utc for more course days closed